What's going on in the big old world today, people? I'm going to bring you the latest and greatest on this touching situation that I've found myself in. We have a, to the left, Chief Michael Smudzinski, LaSalle Police Chief, uh, and the outspoken city critic to the right, with Jamie Hicks, was removed from LaSalle City Council February 5th, 2024. Um, Mr. Smajinski said later that Hicks was not charged, but did say he he will consult the state's attorney, and that he did, and he is holding back, holding back, people. The police report for this case. For what reason? I have no idea. Probably because he fabricated a few things in that report. Um, we're going to get into this little episode, and... Uh, we're going to talk about transparency people that I've been fighting for for a long time and why they don't want Jamie Hicks up inside that building. They don't want to hear the facts, the data, and the truths about what they're doing wrong. They don't want the exposure of all the fucking things they don't do right. And I'm going to keep bringing it to them, people. It's been a little over a year, and it's getting fucking pretty deep. And we're going to talk about it a little more in just a few seconds. Okay, people, so I'm going to give you a little background on myself. Uh, we had a fire here a little over a year ago. A chemical plant blew up and spewed chemicals all over our neighborhoods. The EPA and all the good, fine federal agencies and state agencies all failed us, including my local city uh, mayor. Uh, ever since then, I've been a victim of retaliation. I've had my phone confiscated or taken from me on uh, for a warrant uh, for a crime they've never been questioned on. I've had uh, and still yet to have that phone returned. It'll be almost a year now in July. I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound right. Uh, never been questioned in a crime, never been charged with a crime, but just been a suspect of a crime, and they refused to give me the information on how they made me that suspect. Uh, transparency, people, that's what I'm fighting for. I'm fighting for rules, regulations, and the laws that they have put in place, their ordinance, to follow them, but they refuse to listen. So now, here we have... LaSalle Police Chief Smajinski played the judge, jury, and executioner. He threatened me with arrest, and he roughed me up and removed me from a meeting and continued to throw me out of City Hall. So, we're going to get into a little bit of something, something. I'll show you a couple of videos. I might talk in a little bit of them to give you a little update. But for the most part, it's pretty self-explanatory. And we'll just let the videos speak for themselves. This is why they don't want me in the meetings, people. Okay, this is the city of LaSalle, Illinois, meeting on 10-30-2023. This would be the first meeting that the chief of police decided to take it upon himself to remove me from the meeting, people. Under the Open Meetings Act, it is not his job. Even though they changed it three times, it is up to the committee to make that decision. Yes, they changed that three times on me, uh, for me. To uh, limit my speaking people, uh, these are what they can do to violate your rights. Uh, the reasons why they don't want me here, we're going to talk about that. You're going to see it. You're going to read it. You're going to believe it. You ain't going to believe it. Less than a penny a gallon for water. They misuse the water because they use so much and discharge so much. And the, we're the ones paying the, 
the maintenance of each of them. It's our, it's our meter. It's their valve to their water to run their plant. Also, anybody look at this permit yet? I'll leave a copy right here of your permit, your ordinances, Doc, your ordinances. I hope you read it. Um, this I have it. permit number three. Your ordinance. It's right here. I, I brought it because I knew you some somebody would play that game. Before my five minutes is up, I would like to add. You guys in charge of this committee, CARES committee, and this bullcrap shelter in place. This isn't. This is not a plan. This is not a safety plan. It's not an evacuation plan. Okay, people, yeah. this brings us to the city meeting on 122 uh, this year, 2024. And why is Alderman Bassett complaining about my one extra minute? To what radio station, what TV station, <clears throat> whose web page to be on, where to go. But you're going to sit in a closet with no windows, with a bag of chips, and wait for somebody to come and tell you something. This is bullshit. And I'm sorry, I know. Chief missed the last meeting, and I know Eric Diaz has missed the last meeting, but Jordan Crane and my man back here who knows what the laws and rules are, and if he doesn't, he should know them by now. Why can I have deferred to Jordan then? Did you have any concern with the plan, Jordan, at the time? No, I did not. Um, okay. I, did I, you get I, back I, with Jamie? I, you got no problems with this you plan. You to be in a committee. Do you have something to report on? I'm in charge of the committee, nor did I write that. What did you have um, that, that is a suggestion of what to do in case of emergency. Well, this is bullshit. We know what to do now because it happened. We told them. Yeah, and that's what you're saying. This is how you guys get away with things. PRS. Call carrots. You, I really regret. I'm really starting to regret what, what I, put, putting my name out, your name out on my shit to get you where in your at because the lies that have been coming out of your mouth lately has been bullshit. And I'll talk to you later about that. Call me anytime. Yeah, call Karis. Are you serious? I'm not their spokesman. Call Karis. No, this is a city spokesman. problem. If I'm their spokesman, you're going to accuse me of being on their payroll. This I'll is get. a city problem. problem. Yeah, what are you doing? You're involved. I can't have this. You can't. You can, you can. Yeah, but the last guy was going to fox the fucking mayor, right? Oh, come on. Fuck this shit. This is bullshit. Who let that guy stand here that one day? What's going on? That's the guy that's going to arrest me? After the comments, you fucking asshole. Keep it recorded. Thoughts, comments, facility uh, for chemical facility and anti-terrorism standards according to the letters that they wrote in. If that doesn't alarm you, I don't know what would level four as high as you can go. We all know how new plants are secured and um, if they're going to go uh, that route with um, not wanting to share their information Jim, I, I, I ask you if you didn't get this little packet that I got, that you please go over the what Karis believes, because I've been doing FOIAs for almost over a year now, and I'm pretty sure what I'm reading there it's what Karis believes. Well, I think the city you know, before the city agrees on that. Sorry, but before the city agrees on, because they want them to agree to this. I um, think. Go ahead. I'm sorry, yep. I, I believe the city is ready to speak to the fact that we recognize how many FOIAs are, and I was involved in a lot of them earlier on, but there have been so many now, the city's got special counsel assisting us on that, so that may be something. Yeah, just generally do the number of FOIAs, you just go through that, or that's what we're talking about. 
That's fine, but, but I, 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 if you read the letter the way, way Karis wrote this, not the professional guy, the professional that wrote it from the Homeland Security states something totally different. Um, did the council get the, this stuff so they're well aware of it? Given everything well, I'm going to go through a few things with you since they want to be on that Department of Homeland high-risk level 4 facility for anti-terrorism standards. Um, they're supposed to be checking every truck that comes into that place. They're supposed to be checking IDs. They're supposed to be set up kind of like a nuke plant. Kind of like a nuclear plant. Like you see the guards and all the fences and shit. They leave their gates wide open. I can drive through the front, come out the damn back. I can go through the pond if I wanted to. Ain't nobody going to stop me. Does that seem like a facility that somebody's in charge of? Because in order for them to be this, they need to be inspected, not by the city. That's failing us on that. Um, but by Homeland Security. Wonder why we had armed guards? Wonder why. Right after the fire, make it look good, right? We're doing everything according to the book. And then some slick cat slides into the damn fence line and starts robbing cars, ends up found in a Keras chemical building inside the fence line of a highly secure facility with no damn shoes on. Something's got to change around here, people. Sorry, but it does. I'm going to get into this, and I'm only going to cover a few things. Fire department should inspect facilities that handle hazardous chemicals using the authority provided under section 312 the damn laws I spouted out the first damn week in here. As part of a, the on-site ins inspections, facilities are required to provide location of information of all hazardous chemicals presented at the facility. Fire departments are encouraged to use this authority under the chemical risk at e e their, to use this authority under the chemical risk at each facility in order to appropriately respond to those at risk. As noted, it is crucially important that the first responders make full use of the chemical hazard information when appropriately trained to minimize the risks to firefighters, medics, hazmat teams, and people responding to the emergency. Notification to the public. Uh, its activities and hold public meetings to discuss the emergency plan with the community. Every second. Not Karis's crap. I may go a little over. Can I ask for a middle um, to discuss an emergency plan with the community? Educate the public about chemical risks and share the information on what is to be done during an emergency. Evacuation, shelter in place. We are at five minutes. Ensuring, one minute please, can I request one minute please? <laughs> the council, it's not him, it's the council, it's the vote of the council. Well, I just I'll, need I'll one minute. Give him a minute, that's all I need, thank you. Third. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. To ensure that the public understands what to do when they receive this information. Participate in the planning process and promote participation in emergency exercises. Addressing the language and culture issues in our town to the vulnerable and sensitive and low income members of the community to assist them effectively in participating in local planning meetings, understanding the risk issues and what, not, what to do when an accident occurs. Now this peer paperwork is from the EPA. This is dated 2017, and the more I dig, the more I realize a lot of things ain't been happening. Matt, we appreciate it. <clears throat> Let's get to our point in our, in our uh, meeting where we open to, for public comments. I guess just to kind of reiterate what uh, was mentioned last week by myself is, again. Okay. That man just said he opened the floor to public comment. 
I don't know what that means to you, but means it's public comment time. Let's continue. And this is a time for you to speak and give your thoughts, concerns, ask some questions. Uh, as far as my, on my behalf, any questions for me, I'm going to ask you to please get a hold of me um, after hours. Call my phone, give me an email, whatever you want to do. Come make an appointment, we can talk about it. Uh, again, I don't want to take away from your five minutes. Uh, again, thank you guys for public comment. As you he just up. don't want to be transparent, sure people. You are identifying who you are. Uh, again, just if you know, even if you think you know, we know who you are. Just for the record, we need to have that on the on our audio recording. I would like to start myself with the public comment, if I could. Um, all South residents received basically a information flyer, uh, postcard type correspondence. Um, everybody should have gotten received one. And basically, this is something that we put out through the EPA. Um, it's an annual thing that goes out. Um, that's my particular one. You notice when you get it, if you didn't receive it already at your home, it'll so tell you where to log into, and then it'll give you your ID number, which is in the bottom left-hand <coughs> corner. And that's basically your password to get in. What this is looking for is a situation if somebody has, like, a sprinkler system at home, any kind of back valve, check valve situation. Uh, some people have that with, for sure, restaurants, commercial property. <clears throat> it won't really probably pertain to many of us in our own uh, residential areas, but this is just to make sure that we're in compliance what we need to be doing uh, for this company to do that. So, um, again, this is something that's through the APA. It's nothing new. We've re received this before. Kevin, anything to add on that? We begin some questions on that, so I just want to make sure everybody kind of understands what that's about. So, everybody up here, do you guys get one of those? Already? Yeah, okay. it took about five minutes. Yeah, I'll say five minutes. Do. Five minutes or less to do. Yeah. Was there a survey that asked about like your lead line? Yes. No. Okay. No lead line question. Uh, it was just uh, it, the one I did was just backflow. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, one thing I was confused about, I thought maybe it'd have something about swimming pools on there, but they must not want that in their survey. It, it did. I, I saw the truth, but because generally if you're filling a tank or, you know, like you said, irrigation as well, but like a tank, it can siphon out if something ever happened, right. and that's why you use a backflow preventer. A, anybody that uses uh, bulk water in LaSalle, they're always hooked up to a backflow preventer off the hydrant as well. It used to be, too, it's one of the sprayed herbicides that you let go. I will correct myself. Right. This, we have to report this to the EPA. We use a third party to do this. We use we hired them. I contract them out to do this for us. Right. My fault. It wasn't from the EPA. Well, this should be the same flyer that everybody got. <coughs> okay, well, that's why we're trying to explain this now tonight. All right. Thank you. Any other comments, thoughts? Please come up to the microphone. Uh, Your Honor, before they yes. start, we had a little bit last week. Now, people, this is Mr. Bassador, Alderman Jim Bassador. He is a very ignorant, old, bitter man, and he is deliberately trying to get under my skin because he's attacked me uh, about many issues, about my foyers, about my kids, where they live, la di da di da di da di da This man is a disgrace to his seat but we'll listen to him and I, I I know what he's doing he's talking about me in that extra minute people they went six you know seven minutes we all voted for five minutes so if we start six minutes seven minutes be ten minutes if it's five minutes or if you want to change it to six let's change it but if it's five when the time comes I think they should stop because we all voted on it. Every one of us voted on the five. Right, I think Alderman, it was one of the Aldermen made a motion to, to extend that period of time. And I think then the council the council uh, has that opportunity to, to vote yes or no at that time. But I mean, well, well then why do we have that? The council 
why do we have the five minute rule if we're not gonna if we're gonna keep changing it? Is my uh, no. I think I think I, the five minute rule is the rule, but again, the, the council has that opportunity to to ask for more time, and if the if the majority of the council votes to give that time, then we're gonna do it. But I understand what you're saying, but I think if somebody's midstream and the council as a whole feels that that's something more time should be awarded. It's up to you guys to decide that. I mean, if you want to say no, Alderman, you can say no, you know. But I think that's something we, we all have to decide as a group that the Alderman um, can make that decision to, to ask for extended time. It doesn't mean it's binding, but it, it's up to the vote of the, the, you know, the council. Uh, Barry, that but if that's your point, Jim, if that's your point, just, you know, I, no, I understood mean, so that you're telling these guys. If you want to give them six minutes, let's yeah. change it to six minutes. Well, they don't need six minutes. Every we just extend it. There were two comments and uh, we have time. Jamie, we're, I'm going I'm to set the standard right now. We're not going to have people just making cat calls from the audience when other people are talking. And if that will tell them the same thing if they do that when you're talking. No, there was two of you last time. Anyway, we're going to move forward. So did Snyder. So that was two of you. Okay. Don, did you want to come up? Okay. Just keep ignoring Smile at him. He's gotten fired up. Can you be quiet, please? Come on, you two buddies. Just tell him last time. I'm at you. I can't. You're going to talk to everybody. You're just busting numbers. No, I'm not. You're going to. Do we have a. Don? Okay, people, so let's talk for a second about what just happened right there. Alden Ambassador egged this on, then he says, let's keep them out for good. And, oh, no, he said a bad word. Well, you know what? Did this lady here, over here, who pushed this chair back, seem like this? I was a threat to the public, to the safety of the public? And mind you, let me tell you, the girl at the podium, I know. The girl on the left, the guy uh, next to her, my wife. Um, these people here are trying to pitch a fucking sales. And these guys are as corrupt as this fucking guy at the podium here called our mayor. And the guy that came out. But did you see, people? Did you see how the guy that was sitting here, nervously twitching the whole time, waiting for his cue, Got up right on point and headed out towards the door. And then the other guy who was sitting in the back shuts the door. Don, are you ready? Video says a lot to me in my eyes. Now I'm telling him he can't throw me out of the building. You can kick me out of the meeting and violate that right, but you cannot throw me out of the building. There goes our guy to go shut the door. Here he comes to get my coat because they're going to throw me out without my possessions. Uh, I checked today and I checked yesterday. It's this guy is going to start properly. his bullshit once they get out in the hallway. Uh, I just want to know, how are we going to handle that incident tonight? Are uh, we going to let him back in? This is at the end of the meeting. I mean, this is twice he was ushered out. Uh, I think we'll confer with the uh, city council, you know, Alderman Federer, or uh, Attorney McFedder to see what, what options we have. Because we, we can't have this, you know, if he swears and, you know, this thing. I mean, I, I brought that up because I just didn't want him, you know, everybody talking eight minutes. I don't know why you had to get it all violent. I think we've always been a council that I said sometimes people make mistakes and we're not going to hold that against them the whole time. But, but this is you know, I understand. But again, each time there can be a repercussion for it. But again, it, we'll, we'll talk to Terry McFedder. This ain't baseball. You don't get three strikes. 
But again, uh, it's America, though. We're big into freedom of speech and people have a chance to give their we have to point of view. Week. I'm not going to get but it. we can look into it and bring it back to the council. Okay, so I don't know if you guys caught that, but this man is basically trying to say we need to ban him from the meeting, Mr. Bassador. And then the mayor's trying to say we're going to look into it. This was a planned fucking situation, people. Planned. Planned, planned, planned. Uh, violations left and fucking right. And you know what? It ain't right. It ain't fucking right. We the people need to stand up and stop this unjust shit. And this is would be the warrant for my phone, people, by Detective Brian Kamensky, or however you say his name. Complaint has sworn to no written uh, complaint for a search warrant before me. Uh, anyway, it says Samsung uh, device. It says Samsung device, cellular device. It has two IEM numbers. It's got my name and date of the birth. But this is the important part here. Here, all audio, all data contained on the above item, including identifying phone numbers, ingoing and outgoing phone numbers, text messages, voice messages, photographs, video, audio recordings, email, user information location and GPS files, applications and data, contact and any previously deleted data and media. Now, I don't know about you, but that is a pretty broad spectrum of uh, what you're asking for. And why does there two IEM numbers, people? Why is there a lack of um, maybe a case number? Or something that links this to something. My phone was taken on 7-12-2023 and yet to be returned, people. Why? This is to try and silence me. To silence me, people.